Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. Our number 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. 6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, we are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd love to share, you'd like to share, or if you have, uh, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can purchase them right off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. We've got blog posts and news stories and videos, as well as all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team at 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business if you're an entrepreneur or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle. If you want to make your own hours, work out of the home, not have a boss, be your own boss. The longevity business opportunity might be something you want to look into. Call 866-735-2470 for more information. Or you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. And you don't have to be an entrepreneur or start a business to benefit for your one-time or to get benefits from your one-time $25 fee. You can just get your products at the wholesale price if that's what you like. Call 866-735-2470 or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com to sign up right off the websites or for more information. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, Truth Transdermal Sea Serum, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel. They're up at truthtreatments.com. We've got free shipping for uh, July. I guess that's one more day. If you want to enjoy free shipping for our Truth Treatment products, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, surfactants, thickeners, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. The only product you will find made with 100% active and functional ingredients. That's why you only use a little tiny speck of my Truth Treatments. That's the hardest thing I have to explain to folks when it comes to our Truth Treatments. These aren't products. These are treatments for your skin. They're treatments for anti-aging. They're treatments for wrinkles. They're treatments for dry skin. They're treatments for acne. They're not skin products. You don't slather them on. You use them in a dose, a, a dose relevant fashion. That is a tiny little bit. And that's why Truth Treatments last so long. Our Truth Retinol 5% gel can last you six months. Truth uh, Transdermal C Serum, Transdermal C Balm, maybe two or three months. And our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, even longer. You can find out all about our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Free shipping for one more day in July. Okay. 
So we are clearing up some of the mythology about heart disease. That's what we do on this program is we clear up medical mythology, misleading medical ideas that don't get us better, but enrich the medical model. It's true about cancer. It's true about skin health problems, autoimmunity, and it's true about heart disease, which of course is the leading cause of death in this country and around the world. This is so important. Clearing up the mythology that doesn't work is so important. If we're going to stem this, uh, stem the tide of this scourge, one out of two Americans are expected to be diagnosed with heart disease sometime in, in their lifetime. And I think we have to realize that the mainstream of medicine does not know what it's talking about when it comes to understanding and dealing with this health crisis. And don't take my word for it. Proof positive is in the fact that ever since we had an American Heart Association, heart disease has gone through the roof. Cardiology, heart disease, cardiologists and heart disease and all of the stuff that you hear from the American Heart Association doesn't help us get better because it's all based in misleading and a mythological dogma. Dogma being defined as uh, taken upon faith, not upon evidence. For one thing, we've discussed this at length, heart disease is not the result of elevated cholesterol levels in the blood, period. The cholesterol hypothesis is flat out wrong and cholesterol is no more the cause of heart disease than rats are the cause of garbage. It's not caused by too much saturated fat in the diet. Last week, the American Heart, or, or last month, the American Heart Association came out against coconut oil because it's a saturated fat and saturated fats supposedly lead to blockages and then heart attacks. That's what the American Heart Association tells us wrong. In fact, heart attacks are probably not even caused by blockages at all. How do you like that? Did you know that the heart's arteries, which feed it oxygen and nourishment like all arteries do with any other organ of the body, the, heart, the arteries in the heart are supported by what's called collateral blood flow. Collateral blood flow is based on collateral or, or accessory circulatory vessels that, uh, that feed the heart. The body has an adaptive mechanism to deal with blockages. The heart will actually develop collateral blood vessels. That means blockages can be compensated for by an adaptive mechanism, extra blood vessels, collateral blood vessels, natural bypasses. In essence, that's what this is. Collateralization, it's called. It's natural bypass vessels that are formed by the body. These collateral arteries assure that no matter what happens to the main arteries, the heart will always be supplied with blood. According to CardiacTherapy.com, quote, it is well documented that collateral circulation improves myocardial perfusion, that is blood flow to the heart, contractile function, that is how well the heart pumps, and EKG abnormalities of the ischemic myocardium, that is EKG changes of a, of a malnourished heart tissue which can be linked to improved long-term cardiac survival, unquote. In other words, the heart protects itself with extra blood vessels. And this is why bypass surgery is probably not all it's cracked up to be when it comes to preventing heart attacks. Coronary artery bypass grafting, CABG. That's the technical term for what everybody just calls bypass surgery. This is one of the most common major surgeries in the United States. Each year, literally hundreds of thousands of patients undergo this barbaric surgical procedure. In 2012, over 300,000 CABGs, bypass surgeries, were performed. Fortunately, the numbers are dropping, by the way. The theory behind the, the, these surgeries is that by creating new ways for the blood to flow, by bypassing blockages with, with artificial blood vessels or with, with grafted on blood vessels, bypassing these blockages, we increase the flow of oxygen-rich blood to the heart muscle, and then you can protect, uh, prevent a heart attack. The problem is, according to the Mayo Clinic, bypass surgery actually does not prevent further heart attacks. And in fact, after you have bypass surgery, major lifestyle changes are required to keep the heart healthy. The same kind of lifestyle changes, including diet, uh, diet changes, supplementation, exercise, relaxation strategies, the same lifestyle strategies that could very well be anyone needs to prevent a heart attack without bypass surgery. So yeah, they do bypass surgery, then they tell you to live a clean life. Well, maybe we should just be living a clean life. And by clean life, I mean changing the way we eat, adding supplementation, exercise, relaxation, the same things we talk about all the time on the Bright Side. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you're considering a bypass, if you have heart health issues, if you're on a beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, among the most deadly and toxic of all prescription drugs, you want to wean yourself off those medications. And I've often said, if you're on a prescription drug, long-term, chronic, lifetime, your number one health goal and health challenge should be to figure out how to wean yourself off of it. We can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, love hearing those. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, or if you'd like to join me in my mission to help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program and start a business at the same time, if you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneurial entrepreneurially minded. You can join the bright side Ben team. I can help you build your business. We could do three way phone calls. I could fly out to wherever you are and we could do talks and help spread the word, help build your business. If you're interested, please call the bright side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 or sign up right off, right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Okay, so we're talking about the heart. We're talking about the mythology around heart disease, the leading cause of death in this country and around the world. We've said at length that cholesterol, elevated levels of cholesterol in the blood are not the cause of heart disease. Taking a statin drug is not going to prevent a heart attack. If you're, if you're doing all the wrong things in terms of your diet and lack of supplementation and your lifestyle and your smoking, a statin drug isn't going to make a difference. At best, statin drugs reduce the likelihood of a heart attack by like 1% or less. It's not cholesterol. It's not even, very likely, it's not even about blockages. As we said, collateralization, that is the body makes collateral vessels to do natural bypasses. Bypass surgery is a brutal, brutal, brutal procedure. And then after you have your bypass, they tell you to watch what you eat, make sure you're supplementing, exercise, relax, all the things you're supposed to be doing anyway. Maybe it's the, the lifestyle changes that account for any benefits that you get off of, uh, that you get from a, a bypass surgical procedure. And, and bypasses are wicked, like all surgeries, especially major ones. Bypass surgeries can be seriously debilitating. It can take months to recover. And patients oftentimes are left with oxygen-deprived brains. That happened to my dad. Never the same after a bypass surgery. Loss of memory, cognitive dysfunction, mood swings, depression, increased likelihood for dementias, personality changes. Especially if patients are older. Especially if patients have other health conditions, and most do. Even worse, many people have to undergo multiple bypass surgeries, or they'll have to have additional surgeries to deal with side effects, to deal with bleeding, to deal with infections of the surgical wound. This further increases the risk of complications. According to Dr. Charles McGee, writing in the book Health Frauds, angiograms, which are the main diagnostic tool for assessing blockages in the health of the arteries and assessing whether or not a patient should have a bypass surgery, according to Dr. Charles McGee, the angiograms themselves can be highly inaccurate. Do you know that one of the results of the dye that's injected into the arteries so that they can read the blockages, so they can assess whether or not your arteries are blocked, the dye itself that's used for blockage detection can cause blockages, or at least spasms. The dye itself induces spasms, which make it appear that the blockages are worse than they really are. This is just a classic example of the utter, utter stupidity of the medical model. So they, they want to see how much your arteries are blocked. They stick a dye in there. The body doesn't want any dyes in the arteries, so it freaks out. It spasms. And then it makes the blockage look worse. According to Dr. McGee, there is no evidence that coronary bypass surgery, or for that matter, balloon angioplasties, where they stick a balloon in there to pump everything up to expand the arteries. According to Dr. McGee, there is no evidence that balloon angioplasties or bypass surgeries can extend life. According uh, other other factoids, according to Dr. McGee's book, Heart Frauds, highly recommended for anyone considering having heart surgery. Blood cholesterol, this is from Dr. McGee's book, blood cholesterol levels are ineffective in determining heart attack risk and, uh, and much more accurate measurements exist but are seldom used. 
such as levels of, he doesn't say this, but such as uh, levels of CRP or levels of inflammatory proteins. Dr. McGee says cholesterol-lowering drugs do not extend life, but may actually increase the overall death rate. Dr. McGee says the primary focus in the medical industry is to make a profit, and therefore, much of the advice and treatment we receive is not in our best interest. These are all from the book, Heart Fraud. Obstructions in coronary arteries can open up with diet and lifestyle changes alone, but because of financial incentives, doctors prefer sending patients into surgery. Continuing from Dr. McGee's book, conventional treatment for heart disease often does not work, but safe and expensive methods are available that do work, such as chelation therapy, by the way, EDTA, where they magnetically attract toxins out of the blood. More from Dr. McGee. For most people, angiograms, coronary bypass surgery, balloon angioplasty, and cholesterol-lowering drugs are not effective and are completely unnecessary. The most popular medical procedures are the most profitable for the healthcare industry, but are often the least effective. Hundreds of thousands of people each year are deceived, his words, in, uh, into undergoing expensive medical treatments that do no good and may even do a great deal of harm. Highly effective procedures that are low risk and inexpensive are ignored or even ridiculed, e.g. Chel uh, chelation therapy. Recommending expensive high risk procedures over the cheaper, more effective ones amounts to nothing more than fraud, again from the book Heart of Fraud. Finally, Dr. McGee writes, if you had the choice of going through a risky $20,000 surgical procedure, now it's way more than $20,000, or simply taking a daily vitamin supplement, which one would you choose? Most patients aren't given that choice, unquote. That's from Dr. McGee's book, Health Fraud. So if you are considering bypass surgery, especially if you're older, as in over the age of 65 or 70, you should know that heart attacks, blood clots, and strokes occur in 5 to 10% of these surgeries. 1 to 2% of people will die from the surgeries. Wound infections occur in 1 to 4% of bypass surgeries, often associated with diabetes, obesity, and for uh, patients who've had pre previous bypass surgery. The grafts themselves can occlude especially if you don't change the way you live your life. The grafts themselves can get clogged up. The grafts themselves can become damaged over the months and years, and that necessitates even more surgeries and greater risk. And on top of all that, while successful bypasses can last 8 to 15 years, after about 5 years, the difference in survival between patients who undergo this brutal, brutal surgical procedure and patients who just use ordinary methods for protecting their heart, diminish. After five years, there's no difference, basically. And remember, on top of all that, it's doubtful whether blockages and occlusions are really the cause of heart attacks in the first place. Given the fact that, according to Dr. Thomas Cowan, writing in the book Human Heart, Cosmic Heart, awesome book, by the way, for anybody, anybody who's interested in health, but especially if you're interested in, in uh, heart disease, it's called... Uh, Human Heart, Cosmic Heart, Dr. Thomas Cowan, C-O-W-E-N. According to Dr. Cowan, large blockages are in almost 100% of cases, quote, completely compensated for by collateral blood vessels, unquote. It's very likely that heart disease is not, re not related to blockages at all. In fact, this model that blames blocked arteries for coronary heart disease is, according to Dr. Cowan, being, now being abandoned. All right. I am Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side, your common sense nutritional program on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and also benfuchsarchives.com. Have search engines up at both pages if you miss a program or if you want to review a program or direct one of your friends, clients, loved ones, customers, or yourself to a specific subject, a specific topic. If you miss a program or if you just want to review something, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com have all, bright side, all our Brightside episodes going on uh, six plus years of episodes plus uh, plus a search engine. You can also purchase longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can purchase all our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel if you're dealing with acne blemishes or if you want uh, 
If you want an anti-aging product, fine lines and wrinkles reverse from retinol, our retinol 5% gel, Truth Retinol 5% gel is also made with a big dose of vitamin C. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, and waxes, emulsifiers, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. If you've tried to use retinol in the past or Retin-A in the past, you should know that our Truth Retinol 5% Gel will be is much less gentle, will cause much less irritation, if any irritation at all, than Retin-A. If you've tried to use Retin-A in the past and couldn't, you want to check out our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Got free shipping in July. It's up uh, along with all our Truth Treatment products at TruthTreatments.com. TruthTreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang on, we'll get to your calls here momentarily. We do have lines open for you if you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today. Or just a comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we will get your calls here in just a moment. From the Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry, walnuts may promote health by changing gut bacteria. Research led by Lori Byerly, PhD, research associate, uh, associate professor of physiology at LSU, New Orleans School of Medicine has found that walnuts in the diet change the makeup of bacteria in the gut, which suggests a new way walnuts may contribute to better health. In other words, better bacteria. When you eat walnuts, you have better bacteria. And given the dysbiosis, that is messed up gut bacteria, is the root cause of all ALL, all chronic long-term degenerative diseases, including heart disease, it's probably a good idea to focus on those gut bacteria. Now, using your nightly essence will help, making sure you're eating a lot of fiber, doing a fiber beverage once a day or once every couple of days where you just put flaxseed fiber in water and drink it down. And now eating walnuts, which are also a great source of fiber, by the way, can help improve intestinal health. Walnuts are also a great source of omega-3 fatty acids, which are also very important for intestinal health. Walnuts are filling. They're a great source of protein and also B vitamins and also potassium in addition to great fats and magnesium and other minerals. Munch on walnuts. They're really cheap. Look for organic if you can find. Always look for organic if you can find. From the journal Appetite, dulled taste may promote more calories on the path to obesity. Cornell University food scientists have found that people with a diminished ability to taste, especially to taste sweet foods, are more likely to, to choose higher calorie foods. This could put people on the path to gaining weight. This is why intermittent fasting and calorie restriction, or one reason why intermittent fasting and calorie restriction can be so helpful, they sensitize our taste buds. Even just laying off a of sugar for a little bit will sensitize your taste buds to sweet. Lay off a of sugar for one day, and you'll notice that things that you used to be able to eat or drink, fruit juices especially, soda pop, desserts, etc., are intensely sweet. Now, that intense sweetness, that sensitization to sweetness will go away, and it'll go away pretty quickly. But if you can lay off of sweets for a long period of time, you'll notice that it takes much less sugar, much less sweetness in order to hit your sweet spot, in order to hit literally your sweet spot. Depression and schizophrenia may become redundant terms. Hmm, that's interesting. This is from, uh, this is from the uh, EU Research and Innovation magazine. Labeling patients with conditions like schizophrenia or depression may become a thing of the past as doctors and scientists look beyond symptoms to develop new treatments. What are they saying here? They're saying all mental health issues have the same underlying problems. And by treating the underlying problems, in this case, they're, tra they're talking about treating neurological problems. You can treat schizophrenia, you can treat depression, you can treat cognitive difficulties, learning difficulties, all by treating the underlying causes, making the diagnosis irrelevant. Where have you heard that before? Now, these guys are talking about working neurologically in order to find the root causes of all these various diagnoses. But nonetheless, their point is well taken. The diagnosis is the leaves on the tree. The problem is at the root and in the soil. Now, I don't think the root and in the soil and the soil is neurological. I think the root and root and the soil have to do with how we eat, have to do with how we supplement or don't, have to do with oxygenation, have to do with blood sugar, have to do with relaxation. Nonetheless, their point is well taken. Your diagnosis doesn't matter when it comes to reversing whatever your health challenge is. Backtrack to the same basic things that cause all problems, including, by the way, heart disease, which we'll talk about tomorrow, the real causes of heart disease. 
Last one from the German Cancer Research Center. Cancer cells put the brakes on the immune system. This is how cancer cells work. Quote, in order for cancer cells to successfully spread and multiply, they must find a way to avoid the body's own immune system. Unquote. In other words, cancer cells suppress immunity. That's how they grow. The body has a surveillance system and a defense system that protects it from cancer. It surveils all the time for cells that have gone cancerous and kills them. Or even better, once a cell mutates and it becomes cancerous, it's supposed to kill itself. The body takes care of itself through the immune system. Oh, but what does chemotherapy do? What, is, what do cancer drugs do? They suppress the immune system. So on the one hand, cancer cells work, cancer cells or cells become cancerous and they metastasize, they spread by putting the brakes on the immune system. On the other hand, the main treatment that we use further suppresses the immune system. Just another example of the stupidity of our medical model from breastcancer.org. Chemotherapy is the cancer treatment most likely to weaken the immune system. Chemotherapy medicines target rapidly dividing cells, which cancer cells are, but so are many of the normal cells in your blood and your bone marrow, and your mouth, and your intestinal tract. Cancer cells are destroyed by chemotherapy because they can't repair themselves very well, but your immune system cells are destroyed by chemotherapy too. So the very same mechanism that causes cancer is exacerbated or made worse by the chemotherapy drugs that are supposed to treat cancer. Just an iconic, classic example of how ridiculous modern medicine is and what an utter failure it is when it comes to treating long-term chronic, chronic illness and disease. All right, 844 is our number. Let us go to Jerry, Austin, Texas. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Jerry. Uh, yes, good morning. Thank you. Um, uh, about two months ago, I had a mini stroke. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, this horse. I um, had a mini stroke. I didn't go to the emergency. I was quite okay. You know, I could walk around, but I realized what was happening to me. Um, my kids, of course, all were up in, uh, you know, very, very upset about it and the fact that I didn't go to emergency. I did the following week go to a doctor. My One of my sons drove me to a doctor, and uh, they confirmed on an MRI, went through the whole thing, that I'd had a stroke and so on, and uh, put me on uh, Eloquist. Now, I took the Eloquist for about three weeks, and I just stopped it. I didn't like what it was yes. doing to me, uh, making me what, tired. What happened? How did you feel when you took the Eloquist? How did I, what? Did, did you notice that you felt crappy? I mean, what did you notice? Uh, so, yes, I felt crappy. Uh, okay, hang on, Jerry. we got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come okay. back, okay? Don't go away. I'll, okay. We'll finish up. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. We're back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We're talking to Jerry in Austin, Texas. Good morning, Jerry. So you had a stroke. They put you on Eliquis. You got off of it. Uh, how long ago did you have the stroke, by the way? Jerry? Oops. Oh, and the stroke lasted only about half an hour that I felt uh, any symptoms at all. I'm sorry. How long ago did you have it, Jerry? Oh, two, two months ago. Two, two months, months ago. And how old are you, buddy? I'm 80 years old. Okay, gotcha. We sound great. Uh, do you have anything else going on? Um, well, I have had high blood pressure. I've okay. got that under control. Um, I've got AFib. Any, um, okay, I got gotcha. you. Of course, you know. That probably had to do with the stroke. That probably had something to do with the stroke. How? Uh, uh, what kind of medicine are you on aside from the Eloquist, which um, you're not on anymore? No, no, I really Perfect. take supplements now. Awesome, awesome. Here's what you need to do, my friend. Number one, you've got to practice slow, deep breathing every day. That's nature's best blood thinner drug is oxygenation. Under conditions of low oxygen, blood will tend to clot. Practice slow, deep breathing. And that'll do two things. Number one, it'll thin your blood. And number two, it'll, act, it'll reduce levels of cortisol. And that's really, as we'll talk about tomorrow, that's really the cause of heart disease is the stress response. So calming the body down is extremely important. By slow, deep breathing, I'm talking about slow. That's the first part. And that means maybe five or six or seven seconds in, maybe six or seven or eight seconds out. You always want to breathe out a little bit longer than you're breathing in. In fact, just breathing out, like going like, making that kind of sound, that activates the relaxation nervous system. 
So making sure you're uh, practicing slow, deep breathing, slow, five or six seconds in, six or seven seconds out, deep all the way into the bottom of your feet if you can, but at least into the, into the belly. When you breathe in, the belly should expand, and when you breathe out, the belly comes in. And then rhythmic, the body loves rhythm. So making sure you're going in, out, in, out. And this is, by the way, true, uh, great for any kind of relaxation, including insomnia. If you want to fall asleep, the rhythm of the breathing is extremely relaxing. You should be doing it twice a day. You can use hot baths and hot showers to relax the body and activate the relaxation response. That's also helpful. The second, the second element is going to be to make sure you're keeping your blood sugar under control. If I were you, Jerry, I'd have zero tolerance for any sugar. Now, most of us don't have to deal with zero tolerance, any fast-burning sugars, processed foods also. Um, most of us don't have to go zero tolerance, but you do. So you want to just wean yourself off and stay off of fast-burning sugars, fruit juices, desserts, uh, pasta, uh, processed floury products, starchy products like cereals and breads and, uh, and rice and such, uh, uh, processed grains and such. And then the third element is going to be to caloric restriction, restricting your calories as, as much as possible, and eating nutritionally dense foods, uh, nutrient density, calorie restriction. That is low calorie, high nutrition. Uh, vegetables are great. Vegetable juices are great. Fish, uh, eggs, if you can do eggs. Uh, whey protein, if you can do whey protein. Bone broth protein, if you could do that. Oysters, sardines, algae. Uh, seaweed. These are very nutrient-dense foods that will fill you up without giving you a lot of calories to work with. And then last but not least, nutritional supplements. You should be doing coenzyme Q10, 100 milligrams a day. You should be doing magnesium, 2,000 milligrams a day. Probably want to throw in some potassium. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine is awesome for you. Also, I would be using um, the B-Complex like it's going out of style. You'll get that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, but I would personally be using extra B-Complex. You might want to get on carnitine supplements, also carnosine. Both are important, carnosine and carnitine. Probably the Sweeties would also help you. Um, there's tons of other things. Arginine is an amino acid that's very, very helpful for the heart. Uh, vitamin B3 or niacin is a wonderful blood expander or blood vessel expander, and that can also be very helpful for you. In addition to the B complex from the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, I would be using extra uh, sustained release, slow release niacin. You can also use our ultimate niacin, and then also probably the ultimate, young, uh, ultimate selenium from Longevity. Don't forget good bacteria. There's a very important relationship between thick, sludgy blood strokes and messed up gut bacteria. Use your nightly essence as well as fermented vegetables. Uh, I'd be using digestive enzymes with all meals. A digestive enzyme called natokinase can be especially helpful for you. That helps thin the blood. You'll find natokinase in our ultimate nightly essence. And then also vitamin E is a natural blood thinner as are omega-3 fats. So Make sure you're using 400 international units of vitamin E a day, as well as your ultimate EFAs. I'd probably throw in a little extra fish oil, too, if I were you. I know I gave you a ton of stuff there, Jerry, but get to, uh, go to our website, brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com, and check out the archive page and then uh, review all of these ideas because there's a bunch of good ones. Last but not least, get a book called The Sinatra Solution by Dr. Stephen Sinatra. I highly recommend that. Okay. All right, I'm going to go, Jerry. Thank you so much for your call. I okay. hope I helped you out, buddy. A quick, a quick question. Sh sure. Uh, is how much vitamin E is too much? There's no too much. You have to take like ridiculous amounts. I mean, oh, you have so to take. I take three, four hundred units. Four hundred. Four hundred is fine. You could even take eight hundred. Four hundred is fine, though. Okay. 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 Thank you, Jerry. Okay. Take take care. God bless you, my friend. All right, let's go to Charles in Oregon. Good morning, Charles. What's going on? Good morning, it's Carl the Truth Raider. Oh, Carl. Carl <laughs> yeah. the Truth Raider. What's up, buddy? Right. Well, this morning I want to talk about the cortisol yes. issue. As we uh, men and women get to a certain age where we're reaching the endopause and menopause phase, at that point we start experiencing shrinkage. And it's not us that recognizes it, it's others that recognize that. Hey, <laughs> you get shorter? Shorter than normal. Yeah. So what is going on with that? Your ben, bones are shrinking. 
your bones are shrinking, and cortisol is definitely the culprit. Cortisol will shrink your bones. Cortisol will, will dissolve your tissues. Cortisol will shut down healing. Cortisol is really, and, and not just cortisol, but elevated long-term chronically high levels of cortisol are really behind health challenges. Are, that's the real cause. I don't want to say it's one of the causes because elevated cortisol itself is the result of digestive problems, blood sugar problems, uh, uh, mental health issues and emotional issues. So you can't just work on the cortisol by itself. You've got to work on the underlying issues, but the direct cause of all health challenges is going to be an activated stress response, cortisol being stress hormone. So how do you deal with cortisol issues? Well, and by the way, one of the reasons that older folks, uh, people in their 60s and 70s and 80s have uh, have problems sleeping at night and go through shrinkage, like you say, and, and uh, de br br uh, breaking down of connective tissue, especially in the skin, is because of elevated cortisol. As we get o older, cortisol levels tend to rise. So all the relaxation techniques that I just uh, we just talked about with Jerry, deep breathing, hot water, muscle relaxation, visualization, relaxing uh, meditation, yoga, anything you could do to relax the muscles, relax the spirit or the emotions or the mind is going to be very, very helpful. Sugar is a big problem for raising cortisol levels. Excess blood sugar can raise cortisol. The wrong kinds of foods can raise cortisol levels. Dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria. It's really all the things we talk about on this program. Cortisol or hypercortisol or hypercortisolemia, too much cortisol in the blood, chronic and long-term is the third point on our triangle of disease. Not only does cortisol suppress healing, not only does cortisol suppress growth, not only does cortisol shut down growth and repair, not only will, will cortisol cause anxiety issues and insomnia issues and immune issues, not only will cortisol cause dissolution of bone and other tissue, and by the way, prednisone is cortisol, but cortisol will also suppress thyroid function, long-term cortisol levels, and that's where disease, that's the jumping off point to long-term chronic disease, cortisol and suppressed thyroid. I call it the, the adrenal thyroid axis. Now, this adrenal thyroid axis is itself the third point on the triangle of disease. It follows messed up blood sugar and a messed up digestive system. Once again, we backtrack to the triangle of disease. Work on your digestive system. Work on the blood sugar system. Calm the body down, and there's wonderful nutrients that you can use to help balance out cortisol. One of my favorites is pre pregnenolone, which we've talked about at length on this program. Pregnenolone is easy, readily available. It's a great way to balance out cortisol. Same with progesterone if you want to use progesterone. And by the way, there's a very important relationship between excess estrogen or, or, or problems breaking down estrogen, again, digestive related, and too much cortisol. So balancing out estrogen with progesterone cream can also be helpful. Vitamins A and E can also be helpful. Working on fat metabolism is also very important. And I don't want to just rip on cortisol because it's a very important hormone, but long-term chronic secretion of cortisol is really where the problem is. And just carrying too much body fat can put a stress on the cortisol system. So losing weight and making sure you're getting a little bit of exercise in addition to the long term, uh, in addition to uh, lots of rest and relaxation. It's not difficult. It's not a medical issue. It is a lifestyle issue and it does require changes like all health challenges. Health challenges are, chronic health challenges that is, are largely lifestyle based. This is the message of the bright side. Why is it the bright side? Because it's the good news. It frees us from the medical model. It liberates us from medical tyranny, from drugs and bypass surgeries and other surgical procedures. It's lifestyle based. The triangle of disease is based on how we live our lives. All right, thanks for your call, Charles, Carl, the Truth Raider. I'm Pharmacist Ben. That's all the time we have for today. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about the real causes of heart disease. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.